I'm going to make a drawing after a painting by Rembrandt. This is uh, one of my favorite portraits of a group portrait, the Syndix. Um, and I'm starting with the eye. I'm using all kinds of uh, little accentuations and little areas of tonal value. I'm not really de de delineating everything at first. So I am adding accentuations along the way. And uh, this painting is in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. So if you're ever in Amsterdam, go see it. One of the greatest works of art ever, I think. It's a Rembrandt, of course. And the other eye. I usually start with the pupil and uh, I want the eye to be very lively or expressive in some way. So it gives me motivation to work on the rest of the drawing. Where the eyes are good and uh, and, and they and they speak so to say then then the rest will come along um, I also have a real-time version of this video this video is 15 minutes but the real-time version is about an hour but uh, it's a bit long to talk for an hour <laughs> so I'm a bit experimenting in how I make these videos I placed a, a little image to the left and here I'm adding shadows and accentuations. So um, the light comes from the left, and he his face is directed towards the light. So much of his face is lit. And now his, I, I'm doing his mouth. He has this little moustache. But first I'm doing the mouth lips here the moustache they're all accentuations and not that really very linear and i think that rembrandt uh, when you look at this painting style it's much in paint also this approach uh, it's it's hard to determine sometimes where one area ends and another area starts in rembrandt's paintings especially his later paintings here I'm adding some more uh, definition to his face, accentuations in the eyebrows. And also I try to get some of the lighting situation into this drawing. So the shadow of the hat on his forehead is also important. There. Shadows on the right, so towards his nose and cheeks, uh, his and his chin also, but especially his nose is lightest, I think. So I find tonal value is very important. And I'm, I'm adding veils of hatchings. You could say it like that, I think. So gradually certain areas get darker, like his hair here. And I need the hair to be dark to, to, to get this clair obscure effect with, you know, the light and dark effect of his face. adding tonal values so I don't want everything to be light or as light as, as, as the white of the paper I, I want a, a gradual uh, build up of light and dark <clears throat> just like Rembrandt did in his painting
so adding accentuations here and there sometimes I work on the structure as a whole with quite extensive uh, hatchings veils of hatchings even to make large areas darker and sometimes I add accentuations here and there to get the expression better or certain areas better defined the moustache the shadow on the forehead is also very important to get that um, yeah, that impression of that face which is illuminated under that hat I really like this portrait try to expand the area that I'm drawing on the paper a bit And perhaps uh, it would be nice for me to, to hear how you use this kind of videos. Uh, uh, do you draw along? It's, I have uh, put the image on the left. Is that convenient for you to use when you have this video? Uh, please tell me in the comments so I, I know uh, how to make these videos as useful as possible to you. Um, at this moment I decided to make a real-time version of an hour and another version of let's say 15 minutes and I'm slowly but it's sped up here <laughs> but I'm, I'm adding all kinds of tonal values making things areas darker uh, veils of hatchings everywhere and when you get more of the context more of the hairs and the head around this face dark then you then the, let's say the lighting of his face gets into the right context so to speak so it comes alive a bit more and that's the magic of glare obscure or the extreme light and dark effect by Rembrandt. Adding some suggested detail of his color. 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 <laughs> and there are still some very light areas I have to adjust in his face. is continuously adjusting of the tonal values I don't get them right in one go wait I'm working all through the drawing then here then there um, there are people who make drawings and they draw for example an eye and until it's totally finished and then they move on uh, but I approach things in a different way. I draw a certain area and I go to another area and then when the drawing is in the further stage I go back to certain areas to make them darker and modify everything and um, adjust everything to each other. So it's a personal preference what you use as a technique it can work both ways <laughs> I'm not saying one approach is better than the other but it's just what you're used to and what you want I happen to think that if you want to make uh, paintings or drawings which are built up from several sort of areas so let's say you make an interior with someone living in it um, showing someone in an interior and I think then that you need an approach in which you modify certain areas later on as well to each other so but 
some people are wired differently so maybe someone else could do much better what I am you know su suggesting in this technique but using the other techniques so maybe someone else is wired in such a way that they prefer to draw an eye and completely totally while I am wired in a different way to you know to approach things like I do so that's personal preference and uh, it depends on what you learn in an early stage perhaps but also uh, what your personal preference is in that and you can try all these kinds of things for yourself to see what's most appropriate for you specifically I don't even have the discipline to to have that other approach I think <laughs> accentuations to the eye in other areas adjusting the nose this is not a super detailed drawing it's more depending on the tonal values I think this one and I'm only using HB pencils as far as I can judge I think I have used about 10 different pencils and uh, I wondered if there was some sort of B pencil maybe between them that I didn't see but I think these are all HB but I'm using a very coarse paper sort sort of paper so I think that helps to get these darker tonal values using only one type of uh, pencil one hardness HB and I'm just using the regular cheap pencils I think I pay uh, 50 cents or a euro for 10 of these I like using regular materials although I must say that this paper is very good and, and very it's really drawing paper and of course texture and Slowly I'm getting to a finished state of this drawing and now that it's getting finished one thinks about the composition as a whole as well. So the area in which this face is placed must be large enough to get that light and dark effect. If you only draw the face on a white paper and not the surrounding area like I did here you don't get that effect. And Yeah, it, it, it could be a nice drawing anyway, but it, it, it does not have the effect that, that it has, that it should have, that, that this face illuminates from the darkness. And here I'm working to get that tonal value really dark, adjusting the hairs also. You can download a large image of this painting by Rembrandt the Syndix from the website of the Rijksmuseum. So if you want to try it, um, I made a crop of the face of this man and I uh, printed it on uh, laser printer paper. I used a laser printer. So you can also use your phone, but I, I, I like actually a printed version of a source photograph to work from and it becomes a world of gray values so I'm adjusting all kinds of areas a little bit more adding a little more darkness here and there I made the chin a little bit too dark I'm afraid <laughs> not sure so I had to adjust the chin later on a little bit I thought that I did that but 
yeah here I, I adjusted his chin a little bit more to have less emphasis on the slightly too dark chin that I made so I made a little mistake there thank you for your attention and uh, hope you like this video and other videos as well please subscribe if you want to thank you